Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today's video is part one of a three-part series on how to build a kick-ass gaming rig. In today's video, I will show you how to select the correct hardware. The average computer user still buys pre-built systems and the reason for this is they find selecting and installing hardware a very daunting task. An actual fact it isn't. These three videos are intended as a general guide to build your own kick-ass gaming rig. One thing that will make the whole process go smoothly is having the correct tools on hand. The best option is a complete computer toolkit, otherwise have at least a Phillips screwdriver, tweezers, and a flashlight handy. During the installation procedure, please remember to give yourself lots of space to work, take your time, and remain static free. Depending upon your skill level, the entire build should take between two to four hours, but remember to take a break when needed. Now let's go through all the parts that are required for the build. First, select a case. The main features to look for in a great case are lots of room to work, a removable motherboard tray, plenty of drive bays, excellent air circulation, and made from lightweight steel or strong aluminum. I've selected the black Silverstone TJ07 case. Next, select a quality brand name high wattage power supply. Going for a cheap power supply is not smart. Remember, the power supply is responsible for keeping your system running smoothly. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. First is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. If however you are going hardcore and have a dual video card set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's above 700 watts. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. Third, it should meet all the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. One other important thing to remember is the number and type of leads it has. I'm selecting the PC power and cooling silencer 750 watt power supply. One of the most important parts of a stable high performance system is the motherboard. Selecting a motherboard will greatly depend on what CPU, video card or video cards and memory you prefer. You should select a motherboard that best fits your needs. If for example you are not overclocking then almost any brand name motherboard will do. On the other hand if you are pushing everything to the limit you need a motherboard capable of such a task. This will allow for a stable, reliable, fast and upgradable system. So you really need to do your research before selecting a motherboard. The newest trend for gamers is to couple a dual core processor with DDR2 memory and two video cards. I will be using the ASUS PW5DH Deluxe motherboard. Now it's time to select a CPU. There are two obvious choices, AMD or Intel, and whether you want a single or dual core processor. For both, I would recommend going dual core. For AMD, select a CPU that's 3800 plus or higher, and for Intel, select a CPU which is 2 GHz or higher. Also, if you are interested in overclocking, then be sure to do your research and find out what CPU will give you excellent performance at the best price. I'm going to be using the Intel Core 2 Duo E6400 2.13 GHz processor. Next up is the memory. The type of memory needed goes hand in hand with the motherboard. The two types of dual channel memory are DDR and DDR2. DDR memory comes in speeds between PC2700 to PC5000 and DDR2 memory comes in speeds ranging from PC2400 to PC2900. The higher the number, the more performance it offers, but it will be more expensive. I would recommend going with a 2 gigabyte kit that's two modules of one gigabyte each. Please remember to refer to the motherboard manual before selecting memory to ensure that it's compatible. I'm going to be using the crucial DDR2 PC2 8000 2 gigabyte 
memory kit. Your next decision is how to keep the CPU cool. For that, you'll either need a heatsink and fan or a water cooling kit. When selecting a heatsink and fan, it should have a solid copper base lots of fins and be equipped with a quality fan. If you prefer water cooling, then I would recommend going with a complete kit that best fits your needs and includes the water block or water blocks, red eater, pump, reservoir tubes, etc. I'm going to be installing the SwiftTech H20 120 Premium Water Cooling Kit. Every gaming system needs a video card or video cards. There are two main players when deciding what video card to purchase, ATI or NVIDIA. I would recommend an ATI 1900 series video card or an NVIDIA 17900 series video card. Both of these products can be installed in a single or dual configuration. For best performance though, go with a dual video card setup. ATI offers Crossfire and NVIDIA offers S. LI. I've selected the HIS X1900 XTX Crossfire video card setup. Another crucial part of a gaming rig is the quality of sound. For that, you'll need an excellent sound card. This means something other than the onboard audio. There are a couple of important factors when choosing a sound card. It should have 24-bit audio technology, be capable of 5.1 or 7.1 channel audio, and be EAX compatible. Creative Labs have always led the pack in this department. They have introduced key technologies like EAX or Environmental Audio Extension that other sound cards emulate. I'm choosing the Sound Blaster X-Fi Extreme Music sound card. Selecting a hard drive is next. The first decision is whether to go with a single hard drive or two hard drives in a RAID 0 configuration. A single hard drive is inexpensive but much slower than two hard drives in a RAID 0 configuration. There are four main features to consider when selecting a hard drive, interface, rotation speed, buffer size, and access seek time. There are two interface types, IDE and Serial ATA. Select a hard drive with Serial ATA or Serial ATA2 interface since it's the newest technology. The rotation speed should be 7200 RPMs or greater, preferably 10,000. The buffer size should be 8 megabytes or greater, preferably 16 megabytes. The average seek time should be less than 10 milliseconds. I will be using two Western Digital Raptor Serial ATA 74 GB hard drives in a RAID 0 configuration. The next decision is getting a DVD burner. There are plenty of CD DVD burners on the market, so let's narrow the search. You should look for one that's capable of DVD plus minus R at 16 times and supports dual layer DVD media at 10 times. I would also recommend getting one with a serial ATA interface instead of the older IDE interface. I'm going to be using the Plexter PX755SA burner. Next up is the floppy drive. The floppy drive is quickly becoming an endangered species and in many cases it's not required. Although it is required when configuring a RAID setup on Windows XP in order to install the RAID controller drivers. The floppy drive can also be useful for flashing the motherboard's BIOS. Now there is another way around this. You can actually install the drivers upon a boot disk and so on and so forth, but for the novice user I wouldn't recommend going this route. A floppy drive would be much easier in that case. Also please note that with the upcoming Microsoft Vista operating system you will be able to use a flash drive or other removable media instead of a floppy drive. I'm going to be using a 1.44 megabyte floppy drive with a black faceplate. Everyone needs a keyboard, mouse, and gaming pad. When selecting a USB keyboard, there are a number of factors to take into consideration. For the most part, almost any affordable plastic keyboard will do. What's most important, though, is that it's comfortable for you and what kind of tactile response does it have. If possible, go to your computer store and try them out. There are lots of keyboards to choose from, ones that are customized for certain games, some that have fancy paint jobs, others come in different shapes, some include wrist rests, and my favorite, aluminum keyboards. They also come in the wired and wireless variety. Personally, I would stick with a wired keyboard because you don't have to worry about recharging or replacing the batteries. I'm selecting the Hyper HCK 1K18A black aluminum keyboard. Next up is a USB mouse and gaming pad. Finding the right mouse is also a personal preference and there are many main players like Logitech, Microsoft, Razer and others 
that have very similar products that might suit your needs. Generally, find the mouse that best fits your hand and has at least five buttons as well as a scroll wheel. They also come in the wired and wireless variety. Again, I would go with a wired mouse because you don't have to worry about recharging the battery or lag when gaming. I'm selecting the Razer Copperhead mouse. And don't forget to purchase a quality gaming surface. I would recommend one that's fairly large with a smooth surface. I'm going with the Razer Mantis Mat. Now the display. Well, there are two options, the older but very affordable CRT or the newer LCD. CRT or cathode ray tube is a data technology but does offer excellent color, especially in dark gaming environments. The disadvantage to CRTs is they cause eye strain and are very heavy. So I would rule them out and go with a liquid crystal display. There are two different formats to choose from, widescreen and full screen. Considering the widescreen LCDs are now affordable, I would recommend going that route. When selecting a widescreen LCD, remember to get one with a response time of 8 milliseconds or better to avoid ghosting. Also, be sure it has a DVI connection. I'm selecting the Gateway 21-inch widescreen high-definition LCD. Picking out an audio system and headset is your next decision to make. If you're looking into an audio system, I would personally recommend selecting home audio equipment. This will give you the best sound quality by far. Select a receiver or amp capable of 5.1 or 7.1 channel audio and build a system around that selecting speakers that best suit your needs. Of course, this is the most expensive option. The other option is to go with an all-in-one 5.1 or 7.1 audio system. When choosing a headset, select one that best fits your budget and is comfortable to wear for extended periods. Remember, this is a requirement if you're planning on attending LAN parties or if you don't want to disturb others. I'm going with the SteelSeries SteelSound 5H version 2 headset. The next item on the list is hardware security, namely a router. There are basically two types of routers, wired and wireless. I would suggest selecting a new wireless router with the latest technologies. Today's routers offer 802.11b and g speeds, but there is a new standard coming, 802.11n. Please remember though to configure the wireless router correctly to keep out anyone trying to steal your signal or worse. The other option is a product like Alpha Shield Pro hardware firewall, which will keep out intruders, and there is little to no setup required. I'm going to be using the D Link DI 634M wireless router. The next item is something every gamer needs a USB 2 flash drive. They are small, portable, and fast. This makes them really convenient for backing up or storing data. They come in sizes ranging from 128 megabytes to 4 gigabytes, but I would suggest getting a 2 gigabyte or 4 gigabyte model. Also, some flash drives have dual channel technology which gives them a performance boost over the standard USB 2 drive. I'm going with the 2 gigabyte Crucial Gizmo Overdrive USB 2 flash drive. Last but not least is a surge protector or uninterrupted power supply. Everyone needs to protect their hardware from power issues like spike, surge, sag, noise, blackout, and brownout. By getting a quality surge protector or uninterrupted power supply, your system is protected. If you just want the standard protection, go with a brand name power bar. Get one that has a surge energy rating of 2000 or better. If you want surge protection and battery backup in an extended power outage, then go with a UPS. The rule of thumb with a UPS is the higher the wattage, the longer it will last in a power failure. I'm choosing the Ultra 1200 Watt Backup UPS. Hope you enjoyed part one of three and remember the entire list of all the hardware is on the review page. Up next is part two of three where we'll be showing you how to install all this hardware. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds. This has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also pop it on my website at www.3dgameatman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Also keep in mind, you can find out a lot more on all of these products in the forum. And as a final note, if you love watching my video reviews, please remember to help support 3dgameatman.com. If you wish to support, please visit support. 3GM.com
Until next time, take care.